Amen. This morning we're thankful for our prelude of music, and as they just sang, there's a glory-bound special, and I hope and pray that each and every one of us have a ticket for that glory-bound express this morning. Again, thank you uh, for each and every one uh, joining in with us here this morning. Uh, we thank, uh, thank the Lord for our prelude of music, our string uh, playing for us, uh, canon and D, and then how deep the Father's loves for us, and then the choir just singing the glory special. So they sang, and much, as much as I enjoyed that and wish they could keep on going, it's, you got more for us? Okay. Well, we'll look, we'll look forward to more a little bit later here in the service, but time for us to sing. So uh, if you will, we're going to ask Brother Samuel if he'll come up and lead us in some songs. That we're going to start off with, I will sing of my Redeemer. We need to sing of our Redeemer. We need to sing every day uh, that the world around, because Jesus says we are, the, we are going to be the light of the world. Uh, he's the light of the world, but his light is going to shine through us. And we want to make sure that we do our part to, to sing the glories of the Lord. And uh, Brother Samuel, if you can lead us in some songs this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Amen. So we'll sing verse 1 and um, verse 4. For 309, I will sing of my Redeemer after the intro. Redeemed. So we sing verse 1 and 2 for 512, five, sorry, 516, and uh, 3 and 4 for 356. <laughs>
I will see the king in his beauty. Yeah. You know, when we are redeemed, we have that hope. That's right. You know, recent times we've been studying lessons about the end times. Scary things. But when you are redeemed, you have hope. Amen. I was reading an article um, recently talking about NASA looking for UFOs and uh, um, a lot of things, scary things about what will happen. Everybody is scared. What will happen about the end of the world? But the Christians are happy because yes. they are redeemed. Amen. And they know their name is there. Yes. Let's sing 774. Amen. When the roll is called up yonder. Amen. I'll be there. Amen. You'll be there. Amen. So we sing verse 1 and the last verse for 774. <laughs> Just like we sang in the, um, the first few songs of Redeemer oh, yeah. and Redeemed. Oh, yeah. You know, there is a Redeemer yeah. and he can save today. Oh, yes. Yes. So let's sing that song, There is a Redeemer. We sing, let's sing all the verses standing oh, yes. and we'll be led in prayer. 308. 308. There is a Redeemer.
Redeemer. How thankful we need to be for his great mercy. At this time, I'm going to ask Brother Shayi if you'll come up forward and lead us in prayer this morning. But well, let's just open our hearts and give that thanks to God for his goodness. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for all that you have done for us. Amen. We thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your son that you sent. He died yes. for all our sins to give us that hope yes. that right. when the hand of time will yes. be, we will have a place with you. Yes. We will not be part of those that will be murmuring and will be complaining and will be in bitterness and in woe and in pains. But we have assurance of heaven with you. Yes. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Yes. We cannot quantify of the measure of grace and abundant grace that you've given to us to live our lives so, in such a way that when that time comes, we'll be rapturable with you. Yes. We ask that if there be anyone in this place this morning that hasn't found peace with you, that hasn't got that hope in you that you will bestow upon them, you will save, Amen. you will sanctify, Amen. you will fill with your spirit. Amen. At the end when we go home, you'll give us joy. We we'll rejoice Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, welcome to each and every one of you this morning to the house of the Lord. And our prayer is that God will bless you richly for being here this morning. Uh, good to see each and every one of you again this morning. Uh, those that uh, are here and also Brother Randy who made it down from uh, Spokane uh, Valley again. Glad to have him with us this morning. And each and every one of you this morning as you come to the house of the Lord again, may God richly bless you for being here. Uh, those that are joining in via Zoom this morning, we'd like to say welcome to each and every one of you also this morning uh, as we meet here at the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, this morning we're in the view room at the Gladish Community Center here in Pullman. Uh, and if you are viewing in and you'd like to join us, Feel free to join us here on Sunday mornings at 9.30 for Sunday school and for morning service at 11 o'clock. And again, uh, a special welcome to each and every one of you this morning. Uh, for our service to continue, uh, we're going to have middle special. Uh, the mixed quartet's going to sing a song for us. I've never been this homesick before. And then uh, we're going to have a scripture reading this morning. And then uh, there'll be a last special, um, Don't Turn Him Away, a duet before the morning sermon. So at this time, uh, the mixed quartet.
we have a Bible reading from the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. Genesis chapter 27, from verse 18 through 25. Genesis 27, 18 to 25. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau thy firstborn. I have done according as thou biddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Henry. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. 21. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau, or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. 23, and he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did it. And he brought him wine, and he drank.
As we know, the faithfulness of God to speak to our hearts, as he speaks to our hearts each and every day, Lord, help us to have that same admonition that was just sung for us. Don't turn him away. There's nothing in this world that is so important that we need to be focused on that needs to take our view and our vision away from the Lord, but we need to make sure, Lord, help us to stay focused on him Amen. and what he has to say for each and every one of us, Amen. for me, for you. Lord, help us Hallelujah. as he speaks to us not to turn away, but to say, yes, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. This morning I'd like to read a portion of scripture found out of the book of 2 John. 2 John verses beginning at verse 6. Now I did a little bit of history work trying to uh, look up who exactly John was uh, writing to. He does uh, start off this letter with uh, uh, to the elder unto the elect lady and her children. Uh, many commentators were thinking, well, if it just left it at the lady, he could be possibly speaking about to the church. But when he talked about with the children, uh, many commentators have come to agree that um, just possibly uh, there was a fellow laborer that he uh, was acquainted with that he was uh, sending encouragement to. But I think there's some words of encouragement that as children of God this morning, we can uh, reap from what John had to say to this lady and her children. There in the sixth verse, he begins by, uh, it goes on and says, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. John begins there, he says, I'm not writing you anything new here. This is something that exists from the beginning. We need to walk in the truth. And it says, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. I know last Sunday, as Brother Alfred was teaching Sunday school, you know, he was teaching about how the antichrist was a deceiver. And the fact that there's going to be deception in the last days to try to get uh, and that the, the deception is not going to come to those that are already lost, but that deception is going to come to those that are living as a child of God, with God in their heart, because Satan's trying to uh, take them away uh, and take them uh, and, uh, to a lost eternity. And we need to be aware of that deception. And, but he goes on to say, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Amen. Oh, saints of God, I want that full reward. Uh, but we need to really look at this and, and what he's, uh, he's saying here is look to yourselves. Uh, we realize, yes, we are in a day that there's deception on every hand. It, it exists. And yes, as we've been studying in Sunday school, uh, the signs of the last times, the end days, uh, as it talks about. And it gives us all these examples of what is going to be happening. And one of the things it's going to say in those last days, there's going to come a falling away. And that falling away is going to happen because people are being deceived. Being deceived to follow after a lesser truth. I don't know which uh, what it may be, but... I don't know about the rest of you, but I've always asked myself, Lord, could that be me? Can I be looking at the scriptures? Can I be looking at things of God differently uh, in these last days that uh, I don't want to be one that has uh, grown, uh, grown cold, but I want to make sure that that fire is burning bright within my life. I want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm keeping uh, in tune with the word of God. And, and I know that, as it was written here, deception. Deception is, uh, has been in the world since Adam and Eve. But we know that there's an opposition to the truth in this world. 
as we live for the Lord, we need to keep strong in the Lord because that opposition is going to come each and every day. And deceptions come in many forms. We can be deceived in many ways, but Lord, help us as his children to stay focused on what thus saith the Lord. Jesus himself said, heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What means it is not, there's not one, as it says, jot or tittle of that word is going to change. So whatever the world uh, or those uh, forces round about us that are trying to oppose us, we need to realize, Lord, help us to go back to that word because that word will not change. It is this, you know, and that's why I'm thankful we serve a God. Uh, it says our, uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't care what the world says. Because I know what the word of God says and I know how uh, the Lord is in my heart and in my life. But I do know about deception. I was born in a family, into a family, uh, a wonderful family. Most of you know my, my testimony. Uh, there was five boys, no girls. And we were not rich by any means, and so as being uh, number four, my dad started calling us by numbers instead of by name because he kept getting names mixed up. So my brother Dave was number one, my brother Jerry was number two, my brother John was number three, I was number four. And he's six years later, he's number five. But everything in that household was hand-me-downs. So as my brother Dave had it, then it would go to my brother Jerry, and then brother Jerry to my brother John, and then finally, it came to me. Well, needless to say, in, uh, as a child growing up in Roseburg, bicycles were a very important tool. We'd ride our bicycles to school. We'd ride them to our neighbors. It, bicycles were our major form of transportation. But if you can picture already, mom and dad would buy a used bike for my brother Dave. He'd wear it out and give it to his brother Jerry, who would to further destroy it and bring it to his brother John, and needless to say, by the time I got it, it was a piece of junk. <laughs> and I, every day I was fixing it. The chain breaks. I have to fix the chain. Uh, or the bearings lock up. I have to pull it apart and relubricate the bearings and the wheels. And one day I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I'm tired of always having to fix this bike. I said, can we get me a new bike? My dad, he wore glasses. He, he, Hold him down. He said, look over his glasses. Yeah, let's go get you a bike. I tell you what, I had a, I had a smile from ear to ear. This is, this is going to be a great day for me. And Dad, we went down to his truck, and off we went down to the little hardware store downtown. We went into the hardware store, and we started looking through all the used bicycles there. And we, I, I came around the corner, and it's just like, there it is. Is a one-speed Schwinn bike, and everything on it was chrome. The fenders were chrome, the, I, other than just the tires. The tires, of course, were rubber. Everything else was shiny chrome, and I said, that is it. Dad, that's the bike I want. It was $26. <laughs> I know you probably say, well, that's a bargain. Well, today's prices, it was a bargain, but back then. And so it, Dad was a very good friend with the owners, and Dad says, and uh, said, Bob, my, my son wants this bike. And here I am, this, all of these excitements going through my head that, oh, I, I'm going to get this bike, and I'm, I'm going to be the talk of the neighborhood. And then my deception came. See, I, I, I was under the impression that Dad was going to buy me that bike. But Dad said, Bob, my son wants that bike, Will you hold it for him, please? Because he's going to start picking beans next week. And as he picks beans, he'll come in and make a payment every week on that bike till he has it paid off. <laughs> it's not what I, Dad, that's not what we talked about. I asked for a bike. You said, you'd get me a bike. Well, Dad did get me a bike. He got Bob to hold it for me. But the issue was I had to pay for it. And it, I don't know if any of you ever had to pick beans for a living in the summertime. But 
you got paid two and a half cents a pound for green beans that you got to pick. Um, <laughs> you got to feel pretty. Well, now, if you pick really good and you pick over 100 pounds every day for five days in a row, you get a half cent bonus. So you actually make three cents a pound. So if you figure out you got 100 pounds a day, what does it come to, mathematicians? Three dollars a day. Three dollars a day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's what I made back then. So it took t over two weeks for me to get the money. And I went down, I paid for the bike. And I thought, you know, at the time, I thought, as a young person, I thought, this is horrible. I've been deceived. My dad said he was going to do this, and he didn't. Well, in fact, uh, dad did do it for me. He kept his promise. But he taught me something. I learned something that uh, things in life uh, don't come free. The, the world would like to tell you uh, that things are free and uh, paint a pretty good picture. But dad taught me uh, the importance that I need to learn a responsibility to, to work for the things I want and then hold on to them. And, and uh, so I realized at a young age, yeah, deception does come, but in dad's form uh, of teaching me, it wasn't a bad deception. It was something that did teach me as I look back on it. But we need to realize, you know, saints of God, Satan is going to try to deceive us. He's going to try to deceive us from the truth. And we need to realize right off this morning that any one of us, any one of us can be subject to deception. <laughs> There's not one of us that is immune from it. We are all going to face it. And in fact, the first thing to realize, if you're thinking this morning that you can't be deceived, that means you already are. Deception is going to come. Lord, help us to realize that we're in a society uh, that is, is trying to change the social standing of things around us. We need to be realized, Lord, help us to be sensitive to that. Uh, there's people, we have friends around us that, um, that try to sweep us away with the wrong ideas. And they'd like to convince you that it's the truth. But we need to realize, remember what Paul told Timothy there in the second, uh, or in the fourth, second Timothy, the fourth chapter. He says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, you know, it talks about itching ears. People that want to hear what they want to hear. We need to realize that what is happening is they, uh, they want the message of God to be restyled, to, to fit the times and the flow of society. But we need to realize society needs to uh, be restyled to fit the things of God. And God, God doesn't have to change to fit them. We need, we need to realize we need to comp compromise and, and change our ways to fit to what God has for us in our lives. Oh, you know, let's, let's not, with the Lord's help, let's not be swept away uh, following after the deceptions. Think about deceptions being swept away by the truth. Well, what, what, did, what did God tell Adam and Eve? They're in the garden. They're in the third chapter. He says, you, you can eat of anything here. Anything except the, that one tree. Stay away from it. It's not for you. You know, sometimes the world would like to change what God had to say. You know, and the very nature of deception is the work that begins in our minds about questioning. We, Satan, would love to come and put a question mark where God has put a period. Where God says, don't do this. He's not making that as a question. He's making it as a statement. Don't do it. Stay away from that tree. But don't let uh, that deception, don't let the deceiver come in and have us to start putting question marks. 
Oh, you know, it's, you think about the story of Adam and Eve, the, no, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, but then there came that other voice that kind of started talking to their minds about, you know what, you should really question what was said. Well, is that what he really said? Or is that what he really meant? Oh, Lord, help us this morning. Lord, help us this morning. What God has said, he means. And we need to realize, uh, you know, for Adam and Eve, well, what should they have done? Well, we could rewrite the story. We could probably figure out, okay, what should have Adam and Eve done? But, you know, saints of God, when there's a question come to your mind, when you say, you know what, I, I heard this, I heard that. What do you do? Go back to the source. Mm -hmm. Folks, go back to the source. Amen. What thus saith the Lord? Amen. That's what we need to go back to. Oh, yeah. We need to ask a, a, another opinion. We had a scripture reading this morning. Many of you know the story of um, Isaac, Jacob, Esau. Isaac's life was coming uh, near to an end. It was time to pass on a blessing. Uh, Mom got involved, and I'm not going to get into all the details, but they deceived Isaac. It says his eyes were dim. He couldn't see. And so he had to just take it uh, for what he heard. And as you remember the scripture reading, the scripture reading tells a story how uh, the mom had uh, taken the goat and prepared the goat the way uh, her husband likes it, uh, the way the Esau would always prepare it. But then he took the hair of the goat and put it on the back of his hands because it says that Jacob was a fair, ha uh, fair man. He didn't have hair, but Esau was a hairy man. He had a lot of hair over his hands. And so they deceived him. But the thing of it is, and I, I wonder so many times, Jacob, or, or excuse me, Isaac, as he was there, he says, you know, come, come near to me. He said, let me feel your hands. And sometimes I, I picture just close my eyes and, okay, it's a hairy. Uh, but remember what it said? He says, the voice is Jacob's, mm -hmm. but the hand is Esau's. And he goes back, the voice is Jacob's, but the hand is Esau. So folks, we need to pay attention to the things that happen every day in our lives. Because Satan's going to come along and there's going to be a deception. It, it, it sounds good, but it doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. Folks, you know, J I, sometimes I wonder if you could rewrite that story of Esau and Jacob. What, 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 if, uh, what could Isaac have done? I thought sometimes, okay, my eyes are dim, I can't see. You know what? I need to call somebody else I can trust. Mm -hmm. I can call somebody else I can trust because I'm about ready to give away a blessing and I want to make sure it's going to the right person. Well, the same thing we need to realize. If we're a child of God this morning, are we following a deception that is going to cause us to make decisions that takes us away from God or closer to God? And I think sometimes we hear voices. And I thought, you know, Isaac heard the voice. He says, that's the, that's the voice of my son Jacob. But the, the, he realized that there was something wrong. Well, you know the rest of the story. He, he knew there was something wrong, but he continued on. And I, I pray this morning, Lord, help us Amen. as his children to be sensitive. Amen. I asked the question this morning, in life, are, th are there things that maybe have been deceiving you? Are there things that have been deceiving me that causes me to walk further from the Lord than what I should be? Because, folks, deception a lot of times doesn't come as this big block in the middle of the road. It becomes as just this little wedge. It's just a little wedge that just can creep in and begin to move us just slightly off the course that God has for us to be on. And if, we, if we're not sensitive to that wedge, it'll move us. Yeah. You know, when I was back home as a kid, we used, to, we used to go saw down big trees. And we'd get firewood from it. 
but my dad had wedges. We would, we would cut into that trunk of the tree and the tree may be leaning one direction, but dad would take wedges and start tapping them in and tapping them in. Pretty soon this big, tall, nearly 100 foot tree that is leaning one way uh, with a cut in it and with the white, right wedges started getting that tree leaning a different direction. And dad could make that tree fall wherever he wanted it to just by putting a wedge in. You know, a wedge starts off with just a little teeny point. Well, Satan will do that to us if we're not careful. He'll use that little, uh, uh, most minute detail to start changing us. Lord, help us this morning. Uh, Paul, writing to 1 Timothy, there in that fourth chapter, the 16th verse. Paul strongly warned him to take heed. You know, I, 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 I think about that. You know, Paul is compelling Timothy. He's compelling him. He's reaching out. Timothy, pay attention. Your very soul depends on this. Your very spiritual well-being depends on paying attention. You know, take heed means to beware, to perceive, to consider carefully. Oh, it means we need to prepare. And Lord, help us to realize there's been a quote that I uh, came across and I, I really appreciate kind of the words that were used in it. It says that all deception in the course of life indeed is nothing else but a lie. Reduced to a practice and a falsehood passing from words to action. Deception is just that. It's a lie. But if it's entertained long enough, it comes into a practice and then a falsehood passing from words to an action. And we know that when it turns into action, it bringeth death. Spiritual death. We need to realize, Lord, help us every morning, every night, to follow after the truth of God's word. This morning, as a child of God, or if you're here uh, under the sound of my voice, we need to realize, if you're going to choose to live your life in Christ, you have to build your life each and every day on 100% of the truth of God's word. And we need to realize that anything that deviates from that 100% truth is Mm self-deception. We need to realize, Lord, I I don't want to be deceived. I don't want uh, to miss that day, you know, as we've been studying about the last time. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, folks. I don't want to see any of you miss it. But, you know, it's so easy to be deceived, to get our eyes off of what God has for us. Oh, you know, there's uh, plenty of people out there that are willing and ready to cause a debate. But you're going to find out when you talk with those individuals. uh, They're debating because they're trying to help justify their wrong and sinful living. They're trying to justify the things that they're doing wrong. And so that's why they want to debate you. So hopefully they can feel a little bit better. Folks, don't be deceived. Go to God's word. Thus saith the Lord uh, is going to see us through. You know, but causing deceit means to pressure someone to accept as true or valid something that is not true. We don't want to be caught into that trap. Lord, help us not to be caught into that trap. You know, in Paul's encouraging the Galatians, they're in the sixth chapter of the seventh verse, where, where uh, he says, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And, and I think, I, I look at that, and you think about it from the standpoint of how he's talking to mostly probably people that did their own farming at that time. 
and, and he's trying to let them know to, to realize you can't plant an apple seed and expect a pear. It doesn't happen. You don't go out and plant corn and go out and harvest grapes. It don't happen. And what he's trying to say is don't, you can't, the things of God, you can't mock him. He says if you uh, plant seeds of hate, you're not going to reap life and love. Or if you plant seeds of anger, you're not going to reap peace. Or if you plant seeds of unforgiveness, you're not going to receive forgiveness. It just it doesn't mix. But we need to understand, as Paul was encouraging the Galatians, that uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall we also reap. I hope and pray this morning, each and every one here is sowing things of God. Amen. Sowing the things that are pleasing to the Lord. Uh, sowing seeds of righteousness. Uh, because I want to sow seeds of righteousness that I can receive righteousness. Uh, I, I'm going to get in return for what I'm planting. And I, th- I hope and pray that each and every one of us uh, realize, oh, we, we live in a society that there's many that have called themselves Christians that have been deceived by the world thinking uh, that the things in the world are now acceptable to God. Excuse me? Excuse me, God hasn't changed his word. God hasn't changed his mind. Sin is still sin. But, oh, the world and the deception that has come along. I hope and pray this morning, Lord, help us. Help us not to fall into that trap. One other deception that exists today that I don't want to cover really quick. And that is the deception of time. There's a lot of people in this world that say, I got time. You know, oh, oh, no, I, I, I'll do that tomorrow. Or I'll do that next Sunday. I don't have in my life a guarantee of next Sunday. Mm-hmm. Neither do you. Yeah. But Satan would like to say, you got time, don't worry about it. You know, take care of, make your life where you want it today, uh, today and then if you want to serve the Lord later, it'll work. Folks, you know, there's no promise of later. And Satan would love to think that uh, there is um, plenty of time. But folks, as we've been studying, read the signs of the time. Signs of the times are all around us. We need to be, Lord, help us to be careful. Yes, there will always be challenges in, in the world. Oh, and even as people of faith, we're going to face challenges. We're going to face deceit. But the one thing different for us, we know the truth. And it's the truth that's going to set us free. Oh, you know, the world would love to tell you to expect defeat. You know, we're always going to have defeat. There's always going to be failure. There'll always be sickness. There'll always be broken relationships. There'll always be financial troubles. Oh, but you know, saints of God, when we live by faith, when we live by faith, you believe the truth of God's word. You know what? I looked at some of those scriptures. In my word, and I know if you've got the Bible in front of me, it says the same thing. In Philippians 4.13, we're encouraged that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Paul found the answer. In Luke, there was an angel before Mary who said, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And you begin to see the picture. If you're serving God, uh, there should the deceits that come along, we can blow them out of the water because of the fact that we serve a God who answers prayer. Uh, You can look into Mark where Jesus says, all things are possible to him that believe. Uh, There in Mark, the ninth chapter, the 23rd verse. In 1 John 5, 4, you can read, this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Before that, it says, how do we have have that victory? Because Jesus overcame the world. 
And because he overcame the world, we become overcomers through him. Amen. Folks, we're, gu we're guaranteed and promised victory. Amen. I'll read just one more. 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, the 14th verse. It says, now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Folks, I want to triumph. Amen. I want to be uh, where God would have me to be. But I realize for that to happen, I need to pay attention to what the Word of God has been telling us. I need to be, pay attention to the fact where it says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, that we receive a full reward. Amen. Well, this morning, I don't know where you stand with the Lord, but if you're being deceived, you're going a little bit off course, then you know the Lord's asking you this morning, do a course correction. Do a course correction and get your life back where God wants you to be. If you've been serving the Lord faithfully, God bless you. Keep serving him. He will equip you. He has promised that to give you what you need in the days ahead. As long as we purpose in our heart that, Lord, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. And if I follow you, you got the promise that one of these days we're going to meet in those clouds above. Oh, as we heard this morning, I want to be there. Amen. I want to be there. I don't want nothing to separate me from the love of God in my heart. And that starts in my heart by purposing. Purpose in my heart that I want to be what God wants me to be. Amen. When we do that, we'll find his blessing. But oh, this morning, we need to take time and pray. Make sure that our hearts are aligned with God's will in our hearts and our lives. We sing song number two, 602, I have decided to follow Jesus. Sing that song, but as you sing it, let's come and pray. we have revealed unto us this morning oh that we can be deceived but there is grace for you that, is, that there is grace for us lord we are here this morning praying that you help us to follow you to follow you oh lord help us to choose to follow you today lord please as much as they are here this morning and they are not saved lord we pray that you save them oh we pray that you sanctify them Oh, those that are sanctified and not filled with the Spirit, Lord, we pray this morning that they may receive the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning. Oh, those who are sick, we pray that this world will heal them this morning. And at the end, Lord, oh, we want to see your face above. We want to reign with you. Please take us to heaven, oh Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.